This video was created on the traditional territories of the Blackfoot Confederacy, Siksika, Kainai, Pakani, Asutina, and the Yarhi Nakoda Nations, the Métis Nation Region 3, and all people who make their homes in the Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta. Hi there and welcome back to Art with Raspo. Today uh, we have a very special guest who is uh, Scout. The dog Scout is uh, my grand dog and uh, we're going to do a watercolor painting of Scout and that's going to prepare you to be able to do your painting of your own pet. So today let's paint a pet. Okay, for this lesson, you're going to need some uh, watercolor paper. This is great paper to work with. Um, also, uh, you'll need uh, watercolors like this. Just a pan set will work fine for what we're doing. And uh, these charcoal pencils are, are great to work with to do your drawing out first. And uh, I like to use these kneaded erasers. They're uh, really good to work with. And finally, um, you need a big brush and a fine brush that will hold water and uh, we'll get started. Okay, this is what our setup is going to look like for today. We've got, uh, or I like to use sometimes a, a yogurt container, empty yogurt container, fill it with water. I'm going to use this lid uh, for mixing these paints on uh, when we start to paint uh, Scout, the dog, today. Uh, you know that I like those erasers, the uh, kneaded erasers, and uh, what's fun about them is that you can make uh, whatever you're drawing before you draw it, just for fun. Gives you a good sense also of what the uh, what the um, dog or pet or whatever you're portraying kind of feels like in 3D. So I've got my eraser ready. You can use an old pencil like this uh, for this part if you don't have a charcoal pencil. You can get these at the dollar store though, as I may have mentioned earlier, and uh, they're not overly expensive. Again, a uh, uh, little bit thicker brush for uh, carrying more water, and this is for details at the very end uh, when we were painting. And uh, so I've also got my, uh, my tea ready. I've got an Art with Raspo mug here, and uh, soon I'll be able to sell you some... Uh, Art with Raspo uh, merchandise when I get uh, a bit more organized. So anyway, let's uh, start drawing, uh, or I mean, let's start painting Scout now. Okay, when you're going to paint your own pet after this, hopefully, uh, you're going to want to get a great photo of uh, your pet. This is a great photo of Scout, and uh, it was taken right after uh, she'd gone for a long walk. Um, as I said before, she likes eating boxes, and so I let her uh, eat a box before uh, we begin here. And uh, also, uh, she liked uh, to drink from the water hose, so anything to get her to smile. So how we're going to start off uh, right now is um, we're going to draw uh, kind of the big overall shape with our, uh, with our pencil. And uh, I can see that it's going to be, uh, it's going to kind of uh, follow a, uh, a line like this, a shape. And we've got kind of a big kind of triangle, kind of a wobbly triangle going up here. And then uh, as we come down here, we've got uh, another kind of triangle coming across. And I know the center of the, the uh, scout's head is going to kind of come along down here. And I'm looking at the, uh, actually the shape of the outside. It's almost as if I'm tracing this, uh, this uh, the outline of scout while I'm drawing. And then I can make corrections later on, and I probably will. But this outer shape kind of is shaped like uh, like this. And it kind of comes in. And then the shoulder kind of comes shoulder kind of comes down here. And I can see the dog collar is gonna kind of follow a line down here. 
Whoops. And boy, she's uh, she's got a great smile. Don't see a lot of dogs smiling like Scout does. Very happy dog. Of course, you know she's part husky, and uh, we had a husky named Tala. If you watched a earlier video that I did, and uh, the thing with huskies is that uh, if you decide to own a husky you need to walk it uh, at least an hour or two a, a day otherwise it's going to get bored or he or she's going to get bored and and uh, what's going to happen is that they're going to eat they're going to chew they're going to well you think they're destroying but they're just uh, they need a sense of uh, purpose just like we all do to work so they may just work on your shoes or like I said in the other episode, my friend's husky started to eat his bike. I'm not even kidding. So, anyway, we kind of, kind of got, got a nose in here. And I'm just looking at the shapes. And the other thing I'm doing too is I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying drawing. I love drawing so much. Get my tea here. Have a sip. Now, if I wasn't teaching you right now, I'd probably be listening to some of my favorite music while I was doing this, just so it was even more um, relaxing and, and fun. And maybe if you're doing this in the classroom, maybe the teacher will put on some music when uh, you get used to uh, uh, drawing or painting uh, this way that I do. And... Uh, Okay, we got kind of an eye going over here. Don't uh, fixate or, or go right to the eyes when you're drawing. Get all the big shapes, like I always say, get all the big shapes first and then you can start uh, uh, doing the other stuff. So, Now, uh, this is the first uh, video, Art with Raspo video, I've done since I retired from the classroom. I was a classroom teacher for uh, 20 years, but uh, I'm continuing to, uh, to uh, substitute at this point, or guest teach for people's classes. And so, uh, this is the kind of thing I hope I'm going to be doing uh, with uh, young people. Uh, kids like yourself and it'll be great okay so I've got some basic shapes down here and you know what we're not gonna worry uh, like in the previous uh, <clears throat> the previous draw or uh, paintings that we've done um, I, uh, we, we, uh, made a perfect drawing, uh, or we got it as good as we could, but, uh, when you're doing, um, the watercolor, it's not as important. Uh, we just want to get some structure. We want to get it kind of, uh, fairly close or, or good, a good map for us to follow. Look, I'm going to put Scout's collar in here. I don't have to put the collar in, but um, I think that it should because it's making Scout's uh, neck look a little bit uh, thinner than uh, if it wasn't on, then it would, uh, her fur would be sticking out. It's kind of pulling the fur in, so. Okay, so I've got kind of a well, I see I made that ear a little bit on the big side. I'm just going to pull this in a bit. Okay. So you know what? That is going to give us enough of a map to start painting. You don't need to get any more detailed than that at this point. 
start uh, painting here, just like with the kind of paints that uh, hopefully you have, or if you're in a classroom situation that, uh, and we can, wherever we see kind of yellow, we can, uh, or uh, brown, you know, usually to keep it simple when I'm painting uh, watercolor, I use, uh, I only use four colors. That's a blue, a, uh, um, a blue and a uh, red and a yellow. So I use the primary colors and that's about it. Did I say four? Oh yeah, I use uh, um, black. Generally in watercolor, we don't use white, although I noticed this kit here has got a bit of white the bottom and we can use that for highlights later and uh, I like uh, to use this stuff uh, it's called gouache and uh, it's a little bit thicker than watercolor paint if I'm gonna for example put those um, you see those little sparks in uh, Scout's eyes there at the very end then I don't have to be so careful when I uh, paint her eyes whatever color they are they look like uh, Geez, they look like kind of a greeny, greeny brown. So let's try and mix that, see what that looks like. So we're just gonna put that in there like that and just let it dry. Oh yeah, I should have brought some, uh, I always forget this. <laughs> should always have some Kleenex on hand. If you haven't got Kleenex, toilet paper will work just fine for dabbing uh, stuff. If you feel like you've gone a little bit too far um, with your colors, you can always just dab it with uh, a little bit of uh, Kleenex or toilet paper, like I say. It'll work good. Now, uh, Scout's nose is a little bit uh, blackish gray, and we do have a kind of grayish watercolor, but I also see blue in there. So we'll just let... Sometimes it's fun to just let uh, the colors bleed into the other colors like it is there on the nose just for fun. And remember, we can draw into this after with uh, charcoal if we want to, so no big deal. You know, maybe if I, uh, these water, this watercolor set was only, uh, well, not only $8, sometimes that might be uh, expensive to some of you, but um, you can get them at the dollar store. Or, uh, your teachers can order them. They're about the same price. And, you know, they can get a discount if they get a class set. Tell your teachers that they need to uh, buy some uh, watercolor sets for you and watercolor paper, big pads you can get for... Uh, fairly inexpensive and they'll last you a long time. It is more expensive paper than uh, usual paper though because it's very thick and absorbent so. It's fun uh, to do the watercolor kind of flat like this and just let pools do uh, the pools of uh, water or whatever carry it where where it goes let dry like I like it when it's kind of kind of jagged weird like that you know there's a lot of blue in uh, in his uh, or her uh, face here scout's face I see actually surprised A lot of blue and uh, almost like a purple. We're just going to let those colors go into each other.
the blue going in here. Um, and yeah, with the watercolor, it's going to dry a little bit lighter than uh, how it goes on. You don't have to do it exactly the way I do it. If you see colors that I'm not getting, then you just put them in there. This is your interpretation of SCOTE. It isn't mine, so heck, you can try all kinds of colors in there if you want. But uh, it is important, however, uh, to get your drawing fairly uh, accurate so things don't look weird. So people can tell if it... Uh, if it looks weird, especially if you're painting the pet for somebody, um, they're gonna say, "Oh, that doesn't that doesn't look right. That doesn't look like my pet." So, and some of you might be so good that uh, somebody's gonna pay you to do uh, paint their pet. So you got to get it right. If you have access to, uh, you have your own iPhone or your parents have a phone, take lots of pictures of the pet before you settle on a uh, a good pose or a painting because you want uh, to you want to have that character or attitude that the pet has so that people can go oh yeah that's exactly like that's exactly like scout this one is pretty much how scout looks on a daily basis so Like I say, if this is if this is a lot of fun to you, then uh, you're just like me. I can I can paint, uh, draw, like for hours, and and uh, you know forget to make supper, forget to take out the uh, the recycling and uh, all that because I get so into uh, into it. Okay, one of the things that I forgot to put on your supply list is a, uh, it's a real big brush. Now, I know some of you will have uh, some in your uh, art room at uh, school, or if you're, if you're at home, um, you want to get a bigger, thicker brush that holds a lot of water. This is an actual um, uh, uh, Chinese brush. Uh, I think it's made out of badger hair. It keeps a lot of water, holds a lot of water. This is a professional one that I use uh, for my uh, professional paintings, but I'm just going to sh show you. This will uh, make things come together a lot faster for you if you see, if you can see the background behind there. So I'm going to mix in some red and yellow because that's what I can kind of see in the background is the color and then a little bit of brown. I'm going to smush a lot of paint in there. Get this watercolor tray a little bit dirty. And then I'm just going to... Oh, no, that isn't the right color. but It's a lot more yellow. Or orange, even. That's got orange in it. Orangish. Anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to outline this. And I'm not going to get too too worried about uh, it being exact but I want to show you that that's going to um, make Scout uh, show up a little bit better. You've got kind of this orangish background. I'm going to mix a little bit of red in there. I'm 
and let's kind of look at how that follows this line our uh, line that we put down there so we can kind of show the dog off there don't worry about drips like that they look kind of cool I think after you're done your drawing or like the drip I just made there I kind of like leaving those in myself I think it makes your painting look better looks more fresh okay now I want you to look at this water uh, it's very very dirty you need to change your water probably about three times during um, uh, the course of doing your watercolor and because you want to keep watercolors always looking fresh you don't want things to get uh, muddy on you that that looks uh, not good when it starts to become muddy so I'm gonna go uh, uh, replenish the water let this dry a bit and then come right back okay so I took a little break there and uh, you want your water to be clean uh, everything needs clean water including your painting and so uh, I'm gonna you know I should have told you to get a real big brush like uh, this one because I can see that I need to uh, go over with the tone probably kind of a purpley tone and go over the whole side of Scout Do some blending here. And also, you should always put some of the background color into uh, whatever you're painting because the background uh, light reflects onto uh, the surface of everything. So, you know, even though those teeth of scouts uh, or look white they're actually going to be a little bit of orange in them because of the background is kind of orangish do a little blending there and I'm going to do that background a little bit or a little bit more uh, orange and yellow in there Now you're going to not do yours exactly like mine and I don't want you to do it exactly like mine because it's uh, you need your personality to to come through uh, everybody's different and you're gonna you're gonna choose colors that are a little bit different than what I'm doing but I'm trying to replicate a little bit of the brown on the ear there that I see and I'm not getting too precious about it because uh, you can always go in later and change things so um, I'm gonna go in with some uh, black here on the nose whoops <laughs> that really spread a lot more than I wanted it to but and oh so did that but it is kind of darker around the eye there so go in with your Kleenex and clean it up a little bit as a matter of fact I'm gonna 
do more dabbing in here wherever it's light it'll dry it out a little bit too so I can put some paint down without it spreading all over the place no. Oh, I see that that uh, has kind of a, if you mix a yellow and brown, you'll get a kind of gold effect down here in the collar. And there's a little bit here too. I can go back to this brush which is a little bit uh, medium sized and I'm gonna go do some purple on the uh, the tongue you can see there's a uh, quite a bit of purple in there oops really have uh, you know dogs uh, it's like they have mascara on like all, all around scout, scouts eyes they're um, outlined in black it's really quite amazing so no your dog doesn't need makeup probably okay let's put some in here Just trying to guide the watercolor and I'm not gonna worry if it's a little gets a little bit too out of hand a little bit too messy because I noticed even in this inexpensive watercolor uh, set here that there's a little bit of white I haven't tried it yet so I don't know what it's gonna look like but you know what maybe it will give it a shot here and see what what happens with this white always always uh, when you're painting I don't know about you but I always feel like I'm experimenting all the time trying different things and you get some really cool effects and I learned tons from uh, you know the grade threes and fours because uh, they they just get right in there and paint they don't really care about uh, doing things uh, totally correctly or not they're just uh, doing their best and they get some really interesting uh, results that I wouldn't have thought of or thought possible because yeah I did go to school for quite a while uh, uh, to art school art college you know and you learn a lot there but a lot of art is, uh, as Bob Ross says, are happy accidents. So this white is kind of uh, smoothing things out. It's kind of uh, nice, actually. We're going to keep going with it. Mm 
Scout really is a kind of a yellowish dog and uh, uh, what was funny is that uh, we, uh, my wife and wife and I, Lee, we um, looked after Scout uh, while my daughter-in-law and son, they, um, they hiked the West Coast Trail on Vancouver Island this summer and uh, so we had her and one day um, we were outside in the backyard and uh, a fire truck went by, went by a couple times, and uh, and uh, Scout started howling, and uh, she'd never done that before because she's just a pup and she didn't really know what she was doing. But um, when I read about it, I found out that um, the dogs that are closely, more closely related to wolves, such as uh, uh, German shepherds and huskies. Um, will howl uh, to uh, when sirens happen because um, it's like they're uh, protecting the pack or it's a communication thing and uh, so it was really interesting to watch her uh, uh, howl and hear her and she didn't uh, seem to realize uh, I don't think that uh, why she was doing it she just did it instinctively because uh, that's a husky and a, um, you know, shepherd or if you have a German shepherd, they do that. Some of your dogs might do that too, even depending on, uh, um, not just depending on how closely related they are to the wolf, but also because they, they just, uh, it's in them to do that. So, uh, Scout is, uh, part um, husky but she's also part golden uh, retriever too so so here I am I, I know that uh, from the photo here you don't see this kind of browny yellow but um, because it's in the background I'm gonna put it in and it's gonna look like maybe it belongs even though even though it doesn't necessarily uh, isn't so apparent. Even though this these uh, this isn't really realistic like the uh, photo is, uh, I like the way that uh, it's turning out. I really do. Once we um, Go back into it with a little bit of pencil drawing and whatnot. I'll show you what I mean, why I think this is going to be quite good. So this white is actually uh, working okay, so I'm just going to, wherever I see there's a big white space that we need to put in, I'm just going to put some white there and there. Um, if you use this fine brush, this is what's going to give you the uh, life in the eyes when you put a dot there and uh, the dot 
of light has got to be symmetrical on the other side like that that's going to really bring your your uh, dog to life here any creature that you're painting that has got a eye that's like that uh, reflection on it, it's always going to bring it to life What can you can do at any time uh, during your drawing and even when the paint's a bit wet here you can go back into it with uh, your uh, charcoal pencil or if you've been using pencil just to get the uh, the structure back that you might have missed when you were uh, painting get some lines back uh, Maybe some dark spots like uh, under Scout's nose here. Um, back here. Let's see. And you know what? That's uh, it's not bad. Turned out okay. Hope you've enjoyed uh, today. And like I said, uh, you can start uh, doing the same thing uh, for your own pet. I'd like you to to paint your own pet and uh, take a photo for it and and um, and do it up like this one. Oh, I just missed a little bit right here. There we go.